Hi everyone, Joe Fernandez here and today I'm going to teach you about Arms Warrior talents and playstyles for BFA. Arms Warriors will have great passive damage as well as high burst damage on single target and multi-target situations. We'll be going over what's best for both of these playstyles in terms of talent choices, gearing and the builds including the new Azerite traits to ensure doing crazy damage as an Arms Warrior. As we know, talent choices are critical towards gameplay of a spec in Arena. Arms Warriors mainly have two talent specs they can go into, but it is heavily due to the Azerite traits as well. These talent specs can be summarized to 1. Bladestorm build 2. Mortal Strike build The Bladestorm build is for high burst damage both single and multi-target. It's most likely the best build for arms right now. The Mortal Strike build focuses on high sustain damage, mainly single target, with high single target burst opportunities as well. Before we go into the talents, I'll talk briefly about the Azerite traits, which will further our knowledge as to why we pick these specific talent choices. There are two Azerite traits that are key to certain arms talent trees that can help increase your damage significantly. Number one being Gathering Storm, which is for the Bladestorm build. Number 2 is Executioner's Precision Trait, which is preferred for the Mortal Strike build. These will be the best two Azerite traits to go for. If unable to get these due to gearing, then other traits such as Lord of War can be a backup for the Bladestorm build, as well as Seismic Wave being a backup for the Mortal Strike build. First, let's talk about the Bladestorm build. As stated earlier, this build gives high amounts of burst damage in both single and multi-target situations. Azerite traits give you three rows of choices to increase your damage or survivability. The first row is what's the most important, as those are the traits that can increase your damage a lot and is what increases value to the Arms Warrior builds. The first choice trait that you want for the Bladestorm build is called Gathering Storm. This makes Bladestorm or Ravager give you a speed plus damage increase, which can stack with other pieces of Azerite gear, which I'd recommend to give you crazy burst damage every time you Bladestorm. There are key talents in arms that can strengthen this build greatly, so we shall go over those first. In row 75 we have Warbreaker. This allows multiple applicants of the Colossus Smash debuff, which gives warriors absurd pressure. This should always be paired up with Bladestorm, as this is how you will burst and deal crazy damage with this build. In for the kill will be my go-to choice for row 90 for this build, as it has crazy synergy since every time you pop offensive cooldowns, getting an extra 10% haste makes your Bladestorm and Deep Wounds tick even faster, getting more pressuring quicker. Avatar could still be incorporated in this build in certain situations, however, for now I'd suggest in for the kill as it opts for smoother gameplay and means every Bladestorm go with Warbreaker will still deal insane damage. In row 100, Anger Management is crazy powerful for this build as it reduces the cooldown for both Warbreaker and Bladestorm by 1 second every time you spend 20 Rage. This means you can burst every 30 to 40 seconds overall, giving you so many opportunities to slay your enemies. Ravager could be situationally good for the Bladestorm build as it does even more damage than Bladestorm. It would need an Ursul's Vortex though, or multiple long stuns to have great uptime of this spell on targets, otherwise without great uptime of Ravager, Bladestorm will be safer and easier to use. The only honor talent you'd need to better this build is Storm of Destruction. This not only further decreases the cooldown of Bladestorm, but it spreads the healing debuff on every tick making it incredibly hard to heal through. This also makes it easier for Bladestorm to line up with Warbreaker so you can use your burst cooldowns quicker and generate crazy burst pressure more often. Moving on to the Mortal Strike build, this build consists of high single target damage passively and in burst windows. This can be another go-to build and would recommend using when dealing mostly single target damage. 
Like the other build, the Mortal Strike build relies on stacking traits to increase its devastatingly high pressure. The trait you want to stack on your Azerite pieces for this build is the Executioner's Precision trait. This Azerite trait was originally an artifact trait in Legion, but now gives damage number multipliers. This means that percentage modifiers from spells such as Sharpen Blade or Colossus Smash means the buff synergy is extremely high, dealing crazy single target damage when you use all cooldowns. There will also be crucial talents to this build to improve its single target damage and has great synergy with the trait itself. Collateral damage in row 75 becomes the go-to here, just because the effect of Warbreaker isn't needed and this spell can help create crazy multi-target pressure as it spreads single target damage with sweeping strikes. This talent sustains it more, allowing for better rage management to keep your rotation smooth. In row 90, Avatar would be my favourite choice for this build, giving warriors crazy damage on a low cooldown, adding to huge burst potentials. Avatar can also be used as a root breaker, allowing you to stick on your enemies easier as well. Dreadnought becomes the king of this row for the Mortal Strike build, as it increases the buff on Mortal Strike per overpower charge, increasing the power of this buff by 50% and providing great synergy with the trade debuff if you stack both. It also gives you two charges of overpower, which will give you more uses of it throughout the game. It will help add buffs to your Mortal Strike as well as more consistent single target damage. The only honor talent that will directly increase the damage output of this build will be Sharpen Blade. As stated before, percentage modifier spells will increase the value of the damage modifier spells, making it synergize with this build greatly. The ideal situation is to have two stacks from the overpower buff as well as two stacks of the executioner's precision trait, which can then make you unleash an insane mortal strike with all offensive cooldowns provided. Sharpen Blade will also make it very difficult for the enemy healer to out heal the pressure and could force cooldowns for that reason alone. Now that we've discussed the different talent choices involved for the different builds, we can now get into the primary talent choices that you'll use most of the time. It's important to note that it being early beta, these are subject to change in the future and there will be situations where other talent choices could be better depending on what comps you face or play yourself. Bear in mind with the honor talents that one is a staple choice, which is death sentence. The second choice will be Sharpen Blade for the Mortal Strike build, or Storm of Destruction for the Bladestorm build. Last but not least, the third choice of talent will be Free of Range, and I will discuss that at a later point in this guide. Sudden Death will be your go-to talent in this tier in most likely every situation. It gives a high amount of extra single target damage and paired with the honor talent death sentence, it furthers your mobility which warriors lacked in legion. It also makes grabbing a kill that much easier with other spell synergy that you spec for. War Machine isn't good for Arena PvP due to the main effect of it only being activated when an enemy player is killed. This talent could be okay in RBGs though. Skull Splitter in theory is a very nice talent, giving you damage and being a rage builder on a low cooldown is very nice. However, the synergy of Sudden Death and Death Sentence is just too valuable in PvP due to the mobility increase which can make us stick to enemy targets like glue. Stormbow is the most desirable talent here. Having stuns is key to winning a lot of matchups when using it offensively.
It can also be used offensively to negate or stop damage, sometimes even force in trinkets, making it the most powerful in this row. Double time can still be great when you don't need the stun and want increased mobility to reach targets such as druids, mages or hunters etc. Be careful to speculate as against certain comps, maybe the use of Stormbow is still better. Impending victory will only be good when you are focusing on self survivability. If you keep dying versus some compositions, then you can use the talent to help self sustain easier and even play with impending victory Azeret traits on the third tier to give you a big heal every 30 seconds. Massacre is incredible in this tier, as it has fantastic synergy with Death Sentence and Sudden Death. Adding to more use of Execute as well as better mobility makes this my go-to talent in this row. Rend has usually been very powerful, but due to no Azerite traits effectiveness as well as a smoother rotation, the use for it has faded. It could be used in multi-target situations if you have high uptime on 2 DPS, but I'd still prefer Massacre as it feels smooth and very powerful. Defensive Stance is once again the best option on this row. Providing great tankiness often is one of the benefits of ARMS gameplay. Bounding Stride could be okay if you know that an enemy team doesn't damage you and you could use the extra mobility. It's highly risky though so I'd only go for it if I didn't need Defensive Stance. When Cleave can reliably hit 3 plus targets often, it could become the go-to choice for passive pressure due to its effect of keeping up deep wounds. This is unlikely to happen in most arena matchups and the Cleave ability itself does very weak damage. Most of the time you would stick to another talent in this row, explained from earlier. Now that we've discussed in detail about the normal talents, we can talk about the honor talents. Most of these honor talents are the same as legion honor talents, but some have increased in value and some have decreased. As stated earlier, the second choice depends on your build, and the third choice will most likely be situational, so having a good understanding of your honor talents will make choosing them in certain matchups easier. My one and only must have honor talent will be Death Sentence. Due to playing Sudden Death and Massacre, this honor talent is highly valuable to increase Arms Warrior's mobility which hindered us a lot in Legion. Having this not only allows us to get our burst damage off easier, it allows us to connect to our targets that we otherwise wouldn't connect to, making it invaluable. Disarm and Jewel are both great for defensive purposes. Either can be used when needing to survive certain offensive cooldowns that could otherwise be too difficult to deal with. Note that Disarm will only affect most melee classes, but will stop them from doing most of their damaging or crowd control spells during the Disarm debuff. Jewel has no effect if the target is killing you, but will be excellent against teams that are trying to kill your partner. War Banner and Spell Reflection are both utility spells that can greatly increase offensive or defensive play. You can Spell Reflect oncoming CC to stay offensive or high burst spell damage to counter pressure completely. War Banner is great doing it for CC on your healer most of the time to help them get out of CC quicker and keep you alive. 
You could also use it for mobility on yourself, but due to death sentence plus sudden death, you rarely need war banner for this anymore. Shadow of the Colossus is the only other honor talent that can directly increase your DPS. It can be powerful for the Mortal Strike build and increases in value with double time. It's not that this honor talent isn't nice, it's just that the other defensive ones are super valuable and important in most matchups, making it hard to fit this honor talent in. Also last but not least, the first talent choice will once again be Relentless, Adaptation or Trinket. Needless to say, it depends what you face, but now that Human Racial is nerfed and Orc plus Relentless is nerfed, usually having the normal Trinket is still the best. The other two choices can have its situations, but will highly depend on what class or comp you face. Once again, like most other expansions, stats on your gear will now matter. This means gearing optimally for arenas so that you can do as much damage as possible. The gear stat priority are as follows. Strength, then Haste, then Versatility, then Crit, then Mastery. Haste not only reduces the time of auto attack swings, but it also reduces the cooldown of rotational abilities of Mortal Strike, Skull Splitter, and Cleave. It also increases the speed of Bladestorm, Ravager, Rend, and Deep Wounds, allowing for more damage. Now you may be confused because in PvE rankings, crit is the highest valued secondary stat. The reason why it's not as great in PvP is due to crit damage in PvP being 50% more damage compared to in PvE being 100% more damage. This then reduces the effectiveness of crit as a stat whilst also making versatility more powerful of a stat in PvP. This is due to its effect of reducing damage as well, which in PvE gear wouldn't be so needed. Strength as usual provides us with the biggest damage increase for now, whilst gear is at its lowest in item level, and may diminish throughout the expansion. Mastery however is at its all time low, being the worst stat by far due to its current mechanics. Avoid at all costs for now, if possible. There are only ring and weapon enchants that will give us beneficial stats in PvP. For rings, you'd want haste enchants and for the weapon, the new enchant called Gale Force Striking. This has a chance to give you 35% increased attack speed for 15 seconds, making it very powerful for arms warriors. Now that trinket choices matter, I'd suggest getting whichever trinket gives max DPS. If you plan on winning in burst situations, on use trinkets are perfect for this situation as you can control it very easily. There are three key aspects to an arms warrior's rotation in general, no matter what build you play. These are single target, multi target, and execute phase damage rotations that you should stick to. To make things simpler, I'll not include offensive cooldowns for now as they should be used wisely in PvP scenarios. I'll strictly be talking about abilities that have a low CD. Just before we get into the damaging rotations, it's also critical to note that Hamstring isn't a high damaging spell but will be used often in order to maintain on the target. This may make your rotation a bit more complex, but trust me, it's more important to keep your target snared. Than doing more damage globals in some situations. Get in the habit of keeping your target snared as this is vital to staying on your target and not needing to waste mobility spells.
the single target rotation will have a priority system like this. 1. Execute if sudden death proc. 2. Mortal Strike. 3. Overpower. 4. Slam for filler. The multi-target rotation will depend on how many targets there are, thus also changing a couple of talent choices possibly. When dealing with just two targets, you maintain with your single target rotation and use sweeping strikes as much as possible when doing big damage. When it comes to three targets or more, your spell priority will look like this. Number one, sweeping strikes. Number two, Cleave. Number 3, Mortal Strike. Number 4, Whirlwind. Number 5, Overpower. When it comes to Execute Phase, it's important to deal as much damage as possible to get a kill in this phase. With 35% Execute due to Massacre, this makes it easier to achieve. The execute phase priority will look like this. Number 1, Mortal Strike with 2 stacks of Overpower. Number 2, Overpower. Number 3, Execute when at or over 40 rage. It's important to note that due to death sentence, you may only be able to access execute if out of range, so using that to get to your target will be advised. Now burst damage will include the cooldowns of Blade Storm, Avatar, and Colossus Smash slash Warbreaker. So the priority here would be number one, Avatar, number two, Sweeping Strikes, number three, Colossus Smash or Warbreaker, number four, Blade Storm, number five, Execute, number six, Mortal Strike. Number 7, Overpower. Number 8, Slam for Filler. If you are the Mortal Strike build instead, then I would prioritize getting off a big Sharpen Blade Mortal Strike off with Sweeping Strikes activated before Blade Storming. If you are the Blade Storm build, then it's important to spread your Colossus Smash with Sweeping Strikes or Warbreaker and Blade Storm as many people as possible. If Spect Avatar, then use that before too. Don't forget, if you can afford it, make sure you're in Battle Stance too, as this will increase your damage by a lot. Also, now that we have Battle Shout, make sure you have this on, but this should be very easy to remember once you get in the habit of it. So to recap on the important principles of an Arms Warrior, there are two types of main builds and in my opinion, the Bladesome build seems the best although the Mortal Strike build is very powerful too. The Bladesome build has a lot of multi-target or single target damage burst, which can be used often, whereas the Mortal Strike build has very good passive single target damage as well as single target burst. It's important to spec to each build accordingly, as both the talents and honor talents have good synergy with the Azerite traits you select. Ideally, you'll have access to both builds in the future, but may take time to achieve. Make sure to choose your stats wisely, as they will now have a bigger impact on your damage. Make sure you stick to your damage ability priority to ensure maximum DPS too. Alright, that's all we have for this guide on how to get started with Arms Warrior for BFA. Make sure to plus skill this guide if it helped and feel free to leave comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.